What's going on, guys and gals? Bonafide Hustler here, and welcome to Thrift Battle number eight. Hosting this Thrift Battle on my channel today, so hope you're having fun. Today, I am going to be battling um, Rockstar Flipper for basically the end of the losers bracket. Like the biggest losers have come together, and we're going to battle each other till the death. The person that wins this goes to the actual Thrift Battle Championship, which should be in about three weeks. Anyways, I'm the Bonafide Hustler. We don't need to know any more about that. I'll introduce. Casey, the rock star flipper. What's going on, Casey? Yo, what's up? Yep, losers bracket. I like to hang out with the losers, so I'm happy to battle another loser. It's awesome. Great to be here. Hey, everyone. Yeah, and you're about to see 10 amazing finds, 10 bolos, and all that kind of stuff. I'll make sure to link Casey's channel down below when this thing gets off the air. But anyways, I hope you guys have fun. Stay tuned because it's going to be a really amazing show. Uh, Raken Prophet is also going to host the majority of the show. Raken, what is going on with you? How is Connecticut? Any more snow on the ground? <laughs> There's no snow, but it, it feels a lot colder when you come back from Tampa. So I actually just came back from the Ad, AdCon conference, and I was able to meet up with Rockstar Flipper. He was a great host. Went out to eat with him and hung out a little bit, hung out with College Picker, Rally Roots. So, uh, you know, it's definitely cold here, but, you know, pumped up for the show because I'll tell you right now, I would not want to be battling either one of you guys. You might be in a loser's bracket, but – Chris, you got 10 years plus experience. Uh, Casey, I know you've been in the game for a while. Stone Cold Killer when it comes to reselling. So this is a loser's bracket battle, but this is like, this is crazy. So we're win I don't we're know winners, where we're winners go. in Steve's heart. <laughs> exactly. It's That's what I'm trying good. to say. Let me shout out one person in the feed that has a really, really good comment. Adam A517, better be amazing, Chris. I already smashed the like button. So, Rick, what do you think about that? Man, I love when people <laughs> smash the like button before the show starts. It takes the pressure off us. <laughs> Yeah, well, let's bring the pressure back on, right? What, Rick, and what's the, one of the very first things that we do before we get into round one? Right, so this is a thrift battle, guys. This isn't like going to the prom. We're not here to make friends and stuff. <laughs> We're here to battle and see who is going to be the last man standing. So, you know, Chris, you know, here you are, admin of the green room, been reselling for 10 years, and you're here in the loser's bracket up against Rockstar Flipper. Are you scared? Are you intimidated? What are your thoughts on this guy? You know, today I actually figured out that I've actually been reselling for 14 years. Ooh. My very first reselling picture that I have in my uh, hard drive was from 2003. So if I do my math right, we're not, you know, we're early into 2018, but 14 years of reselling, you're about to see something awesome. But my last find tonight is going to rip Casey's face mm. off. Ooh. So there's a hint Rockstar. for you right there. Ooh. So what do you think, Rockstar? I know you, you're a little bit younger than Chris. He's got some years on you, but are you going to let that hold you back, or what are your thoughts? Yeah, you know, normally I'm not really scared of washed-up guys. I mean, they don't usually intimidate <laughs> me too bad. Um, but I think I've got some uh, some pretty hard-hitting shredders in this uh, mm. in this thrift battle. So I think, I think Bonafide's going to get shredded can, tonight. Can We're going to start right out of the gate with it. Let me ask you guys one question before we get started. Do you, did you guys have any strategy in terms of putting your heavy hitters at the beginning or towards the end? Chris, did you have any strategy or did you just throw them randomly together? I would love to put my heavy hitters at the end, but the problem is, Steve, all my things are heavy hitters. <laughs> oh, Rockstar, <laughs> man. He says all of his things are heavy hitters. These are profitable items. I mean – you know, the, what the, you the, do? the thing is, I, I he's probably right. He's probably got some really good stuff. But, you know, even my worst item, I think I'm good. I don't think it matters. I think we're all right. So let's see, guys, in the comments before we get started. Let's wager some bets. We got 99 people watching live right now. Smash that like button and leave a comment. Who do you think is going to get out of the loser's bracket alive? <laughs> put an R for Rockstar or put a B for Bonafide. Bonafide. Um, but we'll be looking at the comments. But with that being said, let's get into round number on, one. Okay. Before cool we get into round guys. one, let's describe, first of all, how it goes down. Because we might have some new people Good here, point. Steve, that Good are point, uh, right. checking this out. So, Steve, kind of lay it out with the points and what goes on with Thrift Battle. Right. Okay, cool. So I'm glad you're a better host than me. You're a player and a good host. Uh -huh. So essentially what we have is we have five rounds in the beginning. And essentially what we're going to do is go back and forth sharing the items that we found from thrift stores, right? So we're going to share essentially what it is, why we purchased it, how much we think it's going to sell for, and just give a little bit of information about it. We're really here to help you guys and educate you guys on these items. So that's the first five rounds. Each round is worth one point. And then after the five rounds, we have two bonus rounds. These rounds are worth three points each, which means even if somebody wipes the floor <clears throat> with the other opponent, they could still win both rounds at the end and come back because they're worth three points 
three rounds each. So the last few rounds are going to be about who explained their items the best and then who differentiated the best uh, with their finds. So I think that's a good explanation of it, Chris. That's pretty much it. So yeah, and the best part about Thrift Battle is we don't vote, right? You guys out there in the feed vote. So if you're catching this live, it is like extremely, it's that much more amazing to be here at Thrift Battle when you're watching live. I wish I was right. to say it's a Wednesday, but it's a Thursday because of Valentine's Day yesterday. I had to take my lady out. So anyways, let's get to round one, right? Raken, round one? Right, round one. Uh, who wants to take it first? I'll let Casey go first because I already know that, uh, you know, there has to be like a handicap, right? Of some sort. So Casey <laughs> has to like go first. I'm handicapped because I'm on this channel, but okay. Oh, <laughs> I love it. I love it. So shall we move to round two after that? <laughs> okay. So um, the first item is really important for any business owner. Um, I bought this. This was probably a week and a half ago, right around the time that Chris mentioned this. Um, and I didn't list it because I haven't decided if I'm going to keep it or sell it, but I think I'm going to sell it. And it's not a super profitable item, but it's something that if you see as business owners, you guys should pick up. Does anyone know just by looking what this is, you should know. This is a portable shredder. It's a very lightweight. This thing weighs like a pound and a half. And you can drop this on top of any trash can or any desk or anything and shred documents. Why is this so important right now? It is tax time. And I have a ton of paperwork that I'm going to be getting rid of pretty soon. Not to mention, because I own a business in Florida at least, I get mailed stuff all the time to open credit cards or open loans or open new bank accounts or, hey, do you want to do marketing? And so I get like a ton of junk mail and I've just been throwing it away like an idiot. And so I'm going to start shredding everything. I was thinking about keeping this. I don't own a shredder. And I think a lot of business owners should do this. I bought this for a dollar. Somebody literally just wanted a dollar for this. So I was like, sweet, like I'm grabbing this. Uh, it's a Model 40S. I looked it up. They're only like 20, 25 bucks. I may end up keeping it. You guys know there's always one thing I end up keeping. And this is uh, this may be pretty important in the next couple of weeks as I finish my taxes. So um, I'm going to open up with this one. And uh, hopefully this will shred the bona fide a new one. So business owners, if you got paperwork, I know we're in a digital age, but we still get a ton of paperwork. The, the junk mail, shred that stuff. Don't let anyone get your crap. Casey has a really good point on that because I think I'm still one of those idiots that throws my trash away. Like I, <laughs> I, I mean, I do, and I'm pretty sure I watch people go down my street every night digging through trash cans. Oh no! Yeah. What what could what could happen if somebody got a hold of like one of those old you know papers, credit card offers? That's a great question, and and this could be just as simple as like getting junk mail from Visa that says open a credit card. Those junk mails have enough information in them. They've got your address, your name. Sometimes they'll have like your business name in it. Somebody could open that credit card as their self. Somebody could call that in. All of a sudden you've got a $10,000 credit card with plane tickets to Dubai on it in your name. That's That can take months and years to correct, so. But if you're the one who went to Dubai, then you pay for it, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> All right. uh, oh, you know, good, good, for, uh, good first play there. Uh, Casey, I like that. It's not good enough, Ooh. but it's good. Ooh. Okay, so I'm gonna show you something I picked up yesterday, okay? Uh, this thing, I couldn't believe it because typically when I, I, I really don't like to resell clothing. Everyone knows that about me. But every now and then something just kind of, you know, through the clothing rack, you can see something that just kind of, whether it be a Robert Graham cuff, right? And I know Steve knows about this or, um, you know what I'm talking about. Some things just you know it's interesting enough to go into the rack and look a little bit further into it. So I was at a Savers yesterday and I went to a rack and uh, I was like, holy crap, that is really, really cool. So I got this sucker. Oh, I think I know what that is. I don't know if you do because I, I really – everyone knows what the I, brand is here. But um, I was going to guess Rockport. I was actually going to guess it was something different. Yeah, this is a Wrangler right here. Uh, not a Pearl Snap shirt but still a cowboy shirt, multicolored. Amazing what seems to be you know Aztec slash 90s graphics almost or 90s colors. I love this thing. It's so neat, and I know Casey <laughs> might keep his shredder. I'm thinking – to maybe at least film a couple of videos with this thing. Um, <laughs> and maybe the, you know, the pre, uh, the context of the video is, you know, if anybody gives me a compliment on my shirt, I'll pay them a dollar right there at the garage sale, something like that. Right. But something really neat because it fits me perfectly. Um, if I was to flex, I'd probably break it. Right. Let's just face it. <laughs> anyway. Um, so this is a pretty interesting shirt. I, you know, the, the comps on these things are somewhere between 40 to about $70 on That's eBay. Right. If it had pearl snaps on it, it would probably be closer to 80 to maybe 90 bucks. Wow. But it has normal actual buttons. So, and it's really interesting because part of it, it has a button back here. 
Like, who wants to let their traps ventilate? Like, it has a button here <laughs> to ventilate your traps. There is a button on each one of the pectoral things right here in case you want to just air out your pecs a little bit more. The you know bodybuilding <laughs> cowboy. <laughs> this is this is my kind of shirt. I think this thing spoke out to me. Now, here's the price. Did I tell you what the price was, guys? Yes or no? Did I tell I you? I didn't hear it. No. All right, three ninety nine. That's great. Like, that's a stellar Good. deal for a shirt like this. So I had really to pick it up. Um, you know, probably a first class uh, rate. This is probably going to be 11 ounces at best. Look at this. I'm compacting it. That definitely fits in a padded poly or something like that, right? So that's my first plan. I'm going to force my first play right there. What do you guys think about that, Steve? What do you think about that, Casey? Somebody yeah. said I can shred the shirt. <laughs> that's true. You could shred the shirt. Um, that's that's totally true. I'm yeah, trying to think of def definitely a cool find right there. You know, the the more weird and unique and colorful, especially if it's old, associated with a brand like Wrangler, um, just good money. Yeah, if it had Ron pearl snaps, it would definitely be a pure win. But without the pearl snaps, I think we have a good battle right here. Rhonda wants to see the tag on that if you can. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So the tag, I mean, it's just Wranglers. It was a Wrangler, not Wranglers. Don't ever say Wranglers. Um, but it's a Wrangler <laughs> long tail, which is a little bit longer in the back. And there it is. It's a 1634, uh, 34 being the sleeve length, 16 being the neck. It's extra long tails, which is good because these things are short to begin with. So an extra long tail is actually a little bit more preferred. It's really nice looking. I mean, super nice. The comps are, I wouldn't even say they're all over the place because you can clearly see that when the colorful ones come out, they're eking out 50, 60, 70 bucks all day. So I will probably film a couple videos with it though. So, so that's it. Round one, we have the paper shredder which is definitely something that could save you from identity theft versus the Wrangler wannabe pearl snap shirt, but definitely <laughs> something that's got the peacock effect. So you know what time it is, guys. Go into the comments right now. I don't know if the college picker is in the comments. I haven't seen him, so we're probably not going to be able to enjoy our beautiful straw poll that errors a 404 warning. Uh, <laughs> but what we're going to do, guys, is if you think that the Bonafide won that round, put Bonafide, or if you think Rockstar won that round, put Rockstar in the comments. B or an R, I think it's really can. simple. Yeah, let's put a B or an R, guys. A B or an R for round one. A tie. <laughs> no ties. Ooh, lots of Rockstars coming out. Interesting. A ton of Rockstars coming out the gate. Okay. Wow. Bonafide gets the W if he wears it. Uh-oh. Uh, Raken will be the official judge here, by the way. The official. There's a lot of them coming in right now. And guys, if you if you could just vote once, it would definitely help us out a little bit to, to find a winner. I see some people like hitting R or B like 12 times in a row. Um, but you want to know what? I'm thinking that I'm actually very, very sure that uh, – I think Rockstar won it. There was a lot of R's coming in. A lot of people are hitting B's lately, but there's like they're commenting like twelve times in a row. What are your thoughts? <laughs> I mean, you're the judge. I can't. I can't really swing yeah, the decision. I, that's your I decision. Think, that's I think for Rockstar. The... Rockstar came out really, really strong. Um, and it, he just there's enough B's and R's now to to give it to Rockstar coming out with that strong Ooh. out the gate win. So we're gonna give round one to Rockstar, which to be honest, I'm very, very surprised. Um, that Rockstar had gotten so many votes for the for the shredder, considering the unique shirt. Uh, he might have brought his awesome. army, though. He might have brought his army. That's the thing. If <laughs> his army true. is here, it could spell doom for me on all five rounds. You know those private groups and groups I run. You know I can uh, I can bribe them pretty well. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. And then you're gonna shred the documents once you're done, like with yep. all the bribery that shred you're doing. The evidence. <laughs> you ever heard of so... Inron, the smartest guy in the room? <laughs> So that's round one, guys. Uh, round one, that's one point to the Rockstar. Thank and you, since Rockstar went first in round one, I believe that Bonafide is going to be going first in round number two. So if you guys are cool, let's uh, transition over to the next round. Okay. So today I picked up this for $10 out the door. Um, it was new with the tags and everything like that. I don't normally pick up three Velcro cycling shoes, right? When I say three Velcro, three Velcro straps on top. But I picked these up because one, they were brand new. Two, they were carbon fiber on the undersole. You can uh -oh. see that. Not a single screw has been put in here. They've never been had they've never wow. had cleats mounted to them or anything. 
Now you might be thinking like, what's the resale of something like this? You paid 10 bucks for it. What's the resale? You know, the resale, honestly, like these are on Amazon right now. They're not even, they're like non-prime on Amazon for 80 bucks. And the mm -hmm. cheapest one on eBay and brand new is 80 bucks as well. So what I'm going to do, because I don't think I'm cleared to sell this on Amazon, I'm just going to put this on eBay for around 65. And any person with half a brain that wants a size seven women's, which is super, super good for cycling, is going to be like, all right, like, I don't care to have it in a box you know, I'm gonna take that one right there. So I really think I can get about 65 bucks for this. This will definitely fit in a padded poly USPS <clears throat> mailer. And my rate I think is like $6.10 or something like that. So it's not bad. But anyways, when you're dealing with cycling shoes, the main thing that you wanna check out is the actual strap method. And if the last strap happens to be like a ratchet type strap, then you're typically looking at a higher grade cycling shoe or maybe even a triathlon shoe. So if you find three Velcro strips, I would honestly say most of the time you're gonna to wanna to pass unless the bottom has a carbon fiber kind of thing going to it, um, or it's a super strong brand like CD, for example, S-I-D-I. But for the most part, anytime you find three Velcro straps, you're probably gonna wanna pass on most shoes that are used with three Velcro straps. But there are exceptions to the rule. I know my stuff and uh, $10 is gonna be flipped into about 65. I'm pretty sure it's gonna be a win no matter what. So And you paid, you paid 10, is that what you said? Yeah, 10 bucks converting to 65 on this bad boy right here. And they're mint, I mean, they're, they're brand new, so. Um, yeah. What's the biggest thing to avoid on those things? The biggest thing that could hurt you buying those? You know, anytime that I buy a used version of cycling shoes, I'm always taking a look at the heel pads right here because those will get a lot of wear. I'm looking for cracks in the carbon fiber, especially up here, because when I dismount a bike, a lot of times this part of the shoe hits the road, you know, the road first. Um, I'm looking for excessive wear and tear up in the front. I'm also looking to make sure that that clasp that I'm talking about, the ratchet clasp, similar similar to like a, skate, uh, a snowboarding ratchet binding strap, I want to make sure that thing works because two out of 10 times, they're gonna be messed up. So you wanna make sure that all that's working pretty good and uh, you might have yourself a winner. But the best yeah. brand is called C, S-I-D-I, C-D. That's, mm. that's my favorite brand in the whole cycling shoe industry right there. This is, these are made by Pearl Izumi. So let's just make sure that these are not CDs, cool. but they're good. College picker in the house. What do you think about that find right there? A big I'm, cycler. I'm here to judge these year. loser brackets. Sweet, we have another judge, that's perfect. Awesome, cool. So. Uh, Rockstar, why don't you come back and see if you can go head to head with those Pearl Azumi cycling Absolutely. shoes? Absolutely. And I am going to stick in the sporting good category. And so <clears throat> I went really weird because everyone knows that I don't like to ship anything that's bigger than a poly mailer, but I got something that I know how to ship because I saw the boxes at FedEx. So everyone's going to know what this is right away. We got a hockey this stick in the house. May just seem like a normal hockey stick but it turns out for those of you that don't know the weekend before steve was here was the nhl all-star game we are big hockey fans tampa bay believe it or not 90 degree weather is a huge hockey city the lightning are in first place go lightning <laughs> this is a game used tampa bay lightning hockey stick so every time there's events they sell all the game used merchandise that you ever see them toss the sticks over the thing they just bring it all out and they sell it all out at the street and it's like a lightning hockey street sale like it's a yard sale for the team That's and they cool. put this stuff out for like five bucks ten bucks um i didn't go to the all-star game because it was like last minute but they did this the day after for anybody that lives around here you can check out events like this and so by the time i got there they had cleaned out a lot of the stuff the night before but this is one of my favorite players from the lightning he's um inactive right now but his name's ryan malone it's actually got his name on the side of it somewhere he goes by the name bugsy and um, it is on top of that, all the items that are game used, they sign before they put it out. Dang. Oh, cool. Oh, man. Are those CD or those Pearl Izumi shoes signed at all? So this is Ryan Malone, <laughs> uh, Tampa Bay Lightning game used stick. It's got his tape written around it. It's stamped by the NHL on that side for official use. And then his, yeah, his... Um, it's got oh, a serial his, number on it. Oh. <laughs> and there's his nickname. He goes by Bugsy. Whoa. Now, the one bad thing about this, I don't know if this is going to help or hurt. Ryan Malone was suspended for being pulled over in Tampa on a DUI. And possession oh, that's, of that's it. That's it. That thing is not worth anything. And possession of cocaine. However. Ooh, now it might be worth something. <laughs> this is the actual game. You know, the stick, the tape that they tape their sticks. All this legit. And um, this stick was $10 as well. 
all the sticks were 10 bucks. They sold hundreds of them. There was only some left, but I, I really did like Ryan Malone. It sucks he got pulled over and arrested, but it's all stamped. It's all NHL. It's all certified. It came from the team. Um, don't know what it's worth. I've looked at some that sold non. They were game use non sign. They were selling for 50, 60. Uh, game use sign stamped, maybe 75, something like that, 80 bucks. With, I don't some, ex- with some cocaine residue, maybe? Yeah, maybe. So I don't expect it'll go up to 100, but it'll definitely fetch at least, at bare minimum, 60, maybe 70. So you better make sure there's nothing in it, like the little, you know, pop top, you know, like some some secret surprise in there, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, yeah like for in game? Yeah, yeah, maybe. <laughs> so, anyway, this is, and for people that think that shipping this is crazy, FedEx actually has a box now that's made for golf clubs. And you could easily Frankenstein the end of it to fit the curve of the hockey stick. And this will ship in that box. No problem. Wait. Okay. okay. Hold, hold on. Hold on. You're telling me that that super long hockey stick, you're going to somehow pack it into a you, golf you club. Would, box. Yeah. You'll have to Frankenstein the end for this long curve. Like you could stick this in the golf side. It's going to come up to probably about like maybe right here. So two boxes then, right? You would have to use two probably. Yeah. To Frankenstein okay. the end of it for this to allow for the extra length in the curve. Yeah, for sure. But um, it, it shouldn't be no problem for me. I'm going tomorrow morning to get those boxes, so I have them ready. Um, and I'm going to list this thing. I want to list it tonight. i got to get photos of it. I'm going to have to put it up against the wall or something. Um, I'm a big hockey fan. Keeping it is kind of a temptation as well, but we don't keep a lot of memorabilia or collectibles around here, so I'll probably just sell it. Um, I wish I had gotten more, but they were sold out because I didn't know until the next day. Steve distracted me. Casey, do you happen to keep everything that you put on Thrift Battle? No, no, I don't. I don't. I sold the knife. I sold the dragon sword. <laughs> oh, did I you? Sold, I sold it for 40 bucks, yeah. Oh, cool. I yeah. think that was more than what you said it was going to sell No, I, I thought nope. it was worth 40. Yeah, it was 40 or 50 is what okay. I thought. I paid I paid six for it, five or six, yeah. Okay. Chris, I got a question. Um, how many boxes is it, is it going to take to to ship out your shoes? Do you have to Frankenstein it? Or? Um, you know, I'm not going to have to Frankenstein it, which is going to save me a lot of time, and my time is money raking. So, um, I'm probably just going to put in a padded poly mailer, and just I wouldn't even have to wait or anything. I'll just know that it goes out for like six dollars <laughs> and ten cents. I mean, save my time, no tape. Everything is just cheaper that way. Are I'm those all about FedEx saving money boxes, and making a lot of money. Are those FedEx boxes free, or do they cost money? Uh, the golf, the golf ones cost like a dollar 95, I think. Hmm. Oh, so you're going to need two of them and then that's four bucks. <laughs> this is really light. This thing probably weighs about maybe it's light, but the dimensions are what gets you on FedEx. Yeah, hmm. no, but I'm going to ship it USPS using the FedEx box. Hmm. I'm going to pay FedEx for their box and then gotcha. I'm going to ship it USPS. It'll probably, it would go first class, but the weight of the boxes is going to make it priority. Is the problem. Casey, how important is it? And I know we're busting balls here on the show, but how important is it to have <laughs> these discussions? Because this is what goes on in your head, right? Right. Yeah. When I'm not not when I've got this home and I'm yeah. thinking about it. When I'm out buying this and I looked at this, I'm right. like, I want to buy this. Holy hell! How am I going to ship this thing? <clears throat> and it, so then it, that's when the thought came to mind of the golf thing. And actually, my fiance was like, "You ain't putting that in no golf box." I'm like. I'll put it in two golf boxes. <laughs> It'll probably go to Florida more than likely anyway. Yeah, well, so. that was the other thought. Maybe I should just put it on Facebook group or Craigslist and let somebody give me that. Yeah, that's a, yeah. being in Tampa Riverview, that'd be a great idea too. Yeah, like 50 bucks cash local. for this would probably be like a great sale. Somebody that wants their man room or something to hang this up, 50 bucks, they'd probably take it. So that is another thought, um, but it's definitely doable on eBay. Don't be scared of shipping stuff that you're not used to shipping. Like if you can make a good profit, it's going to take you a couple extra minutes, four or five extra bucks to make a good profit. Don't be scared of it. I met a guy the other week that sells full on hot dog carts that he puts on pallets and ships across the country. So One please of, don't be scared to ship stuff. I thought I saw a really funny comment from 86 Nicole K it says inside, K, inside Casey's head, scary place. Yeah. <laughs> That's listen, a funny comment. I like that one. Listen, that is probably the most underrated <laughs> statement ever. Uh, okay, judges, what do we got next? I'm on the FedEx website looking for this golf club box. And oh, I got to be out of here in like 30 minutes, so we got to keep going. Oh, this is super fast. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, never mind. <laughs> All right. So let's let's get into the comments, guys. Who do you think um, shared the coolest item? Explained it really good to you guys. Uh, leave a comment below. B for Bonafide. R for Rockstar. Rockstar is up one to nothing right now. So uh, College Picker, why don't you go into the comments and see? I'm looking. Who you? I'm looking. I'm looking. What appears is the winner. So here, B or R. Go. That's what they're supposed to do, Steve. Right? B or R. 
Yep, that's correct. Here you go, CP. Oh, cool. Da -na 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 -na. Hold on. I see a bunch of Bs coming in, about five in a row, and then a couple Rs mix. I hate B oh, and R. Oh, oh, golf similar. club. Okay, gotcha. Like golf club. Like yeah. Yeah. Clubs. Uh, hey, pay like, attention to the feed, gotcha, Eric, because yeah. we need judges, bro. All right, we're going to have to change it instead of B and R because they look so similar when they're flying. Yeah, so that's fast fly. <laughs> Like, right? Bonafide or Rockstar? Please help us out, people. Bonafide or, or Rockstar? Okay, we'll wait till the actual words come through then. I'm going to say Casey is the cooler item, but I know it's a pain to ship a hot. Yeah, it, it's yeah. selling it locally may be my best. Uh, and I thought about that too yesterday. I was like, I might Chris's, need to sell this. Chris's uh, bike shoes are kind of boring. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. But I didn't, I didn't pay him. Quick profits. Ooh, that's right. I'm not, I'm not trying to like, you know, take it out to dinner and, you know, and all that kind of stuff. I just want, I, but I did think money. hockey stick would have gotten more than 50, but on like eBay. That. Yeah. I think seven, 60, 70 on eBay. Maybe I don't think it would have went for a hundred, but attention judges. This stuff is coming through. What do you see uh college picker? That's going to be your job choosing a winner. I saw a lot of R's. Um, but I'm also seeing a lot of bona fides. Can, straw, can we throw pull, straw can we, pull? Can we throw a tie up here? Because that's the worst. You have one job, Eric. It's to pick a winner. No, we're not going to choose a tie. We are going to choose a winner. This All is right. thrift battle. <laughs> you like that? <laughs> straw pull. Do something right with your life. Pick a winner. <laughs> not four. <laughs> All right, Eric, we, we, we got a show to run right now. <laughs> All right, Casey won. Okay, he gave okay. it to Casey. Round number right. two, Rockstar. Wow. Wow. I've never won back-to-back -back rounds ever. No, you haven't. But, that, you know, this might be your only time, and this is it. You know, like, after this, it's done. Like, let me shout out a couple people. Gregory McCoy, who just gave some bona fide beer money my way. Thank you so much. And then uh, <laughs> Margaret, before that, probably about 50 minutes ago, gave me some bona fide beer money. So that was cool, too. I will be getting some beer money. I mean, beer with that money. Thank you so much. Oh, adult beverages. I'll just start saying that from now on. Um, okay, so we're around three, right? Round three, and I think it's back over to Rockstar showcasing the first item. Oh, I got to leave this one off, huh? Yep. Um, yes, okay, so this one is my lame one. You guys, Bonafide is going to win this. This is just one that follows my heart. Anyone that knows I am a gigantic MASH fan. The TV Wait, are you show. keeping this one too? No, I'm not keeping this. Oh. I, I actually already own this one. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, so I'm a huge MASH fan. I own this book. Actually, my mom has it right now. She's reading it because she didn't know I owned it. I found it again. This is the second time I found it. This is a behind-the-scenes MASH, the end of MASH, written by Alan Alda's wife, who is a professional photographer. She was paid by the studio to take behind-the-scenes photos of, um, of the cast while they were filming. Hang on, let me see if you guys can see this. <laughs> so, oh, my computer's in the way. Give me a second. So, there we go. So, literally, she took interviews and behind-the-scenes photos while the cast was filming MASH. And she put all this into a photographic book and wrote out this thing with Alan Alda's help. He helped her write the, the text and the, the explanation of the photos. Anyways, I'm a huge MASH fan. And I love the book. And I love the show. And so, this book was at a yard sale. I told Bonafide I had to hit up some major yard sales because I didn't have anything. And uh, so I got a shredder at a yard sale. The very next door, the next house down had this book. Um, I paid a dollar for it. I even negotiated. They wanted two. I was like, no way, a dollar. I would have paid the $2. But anyways, it's a dollar. The book is not worth a ton. It's probably about a $12 to $15 book. Um, I will sell this one because I already own it. But uh, it's just something that follows my heart, and I wanted to get it. And I was a little short on time, and this was the coolest thing they had. So, um, But I love MASH. So all you MASH fans, if you've never seen it, the last days of mash book is awesome. If anybody wants to buy it from me, you can hit me up. I'll ship it to you. Okay, cool. Um, I want to read out a comment from Ben Barnett. I just got my Cheddar Quest shirt, bona fide legit. Yes, that's right. Someone ordered one of my Cheddar Quest shirts. Thank you so much. That's awesome stuff. I love my Cheddar Quest shirt too. Okay, so what I have for round two, actually round three, is this thing I picked up from a pawn shop. All right, you guys are going to kind of flip your heads when you hear about the price. Now, I do speculate that it does need a new battery, and that's about it. Um, but this 
is a Nixon 5130. I think it's like the biggest Nixon watch that they make. This thing is very, very heavy. It was sitting in a pawn shop, um, had a clearance tag of all things, could not believe it. Um, this is the Nixon 5130 Simplify Edition, white faced, like I said, extremely heavy. And um, my speculation is that this thing only needs a battery. I was trying to locate my watch tool the other day because it does need a watch tool to open it. I have the batteries here already. I ordered them from uh, eBay or Amazon or something like that at only like three bucks. Um, but yeah, and this funny thing for as big as this watch is, the battery is actually really, really small. But with a proper watch tool, you can back off the back of this case right here and install a battery in like in two seconds. It's really easy to do. But that's my speculation. Like none of the hands have fallen off or anything like that. It's a really beautiful watch. Uh, it's just, it's, it's really big. I mean, I'll show, I'll see if I can put it on for like one second. But anytime that you guys go to pawn shops, like don't freak out. I, I think you guys should always go in them because at the same time, the same day I found that, in fact, Right after that pawn shop, I went to another pawn shop and I bought a hobby motor, right, for $28.88, right? And this hobby motor sold the other day for $147. So, uh, sold yesterday. So, um, what yeah, are you going to use a hobby motor for? It's for an airplane. It had a muffler attached to it and everything, but that hobby motor sold uh, within like a week and a half. These, these didn't come from last weekend, but with the weekend before. So, anyways, there's how big the watch is on my wrist. You can kind of see. But this is definitely some cash money millionaires type stuff, right? From the <laughs> videos. Um, but yeah, you know, I, I never think to find I never thought a fifty one thirty Nixon would ever be twenty two dollars out the door from so a pawn. What are you selling it? What are you selling? What do you think? think I think it'll sell between one and one thirty, this watch right here. Okay, we got reseller Rockefeller Chad in the chat says seventy five to one twenty for that yeah. watch. He's uh he's pretty well versed on everything resale he's uh he's a really 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 good reseller yeah it's a big watch though it's really cool so anyways um that's my find right there let's get into the judges right what do we got here i'm gonna throw up so a remember, vote we got a poll someone uh, Facebook messaged me a poll and this is not ooh. straw poll so we're gonna see if this okay this uh, poll works so i will working uh, oh i'm gonna vote for myself is that cool <laughs> I'm just gonna look at the results. I like mash. I do like mash. Could Does be part show? of your lifting your lifting regimen. Somebody said. Now it's not. You do have to refresh it though. It's not. Well, a how do you? Re okay, so you just like straight refresh it. Yeah, on the you refresh. just have to refresh. But uh, ooh, wow, Bonafide's getting. Uh, it does getting have it does blocked. have some cool results oh, breakdown. Nice. You know, Steve. Just when we didn't think Eric could redeem himself, I didn't redeem I myself. Know. I scolded was, you so bad. Why? It was sent by Greg McCoy. Super, Greg McCoy super chatted us and then sent us a. Yeah, but if you'd never made YouTube videos, you would never have a Facebook group. I mean, you would never have a way of connecting with these people. So, you know, it's the fact that you are the integral part of this. I mean, you made this happen somehow. All right. I'm going to concede this round. Bonafide cleaned Ooh. up. All right. Let's go to round four, guys. That was good. Oh, finally it feels good to, you know, Casey, it feels good to win, you know, but <laughs> I got to prepare myself for winning the next two rounds. Cause I know what that's going to feel like. I'm going to pull a Sean white out my butt right here. Ooh, um, falling wow. on your face and then winning. huh? Oh yeah. I'm going to do a Sean white. You'll see last round. Well, I'm glad we have a poll. That's exciting. So I know this round one four. is going to be you leading off bona fide. Okay. Cool. All right. Bona fide round oh, four. Oh, you guys are dead. That's it. That's it. Two to one. Dead. No, no, no way. Now. today. I found this thing. All right. This was uh, right after the actually no, right after the gym. I went to a cop shop. I worked on the bag guide. Ooh. Um, but then I went to a savers. I went to one thrift store today. That was it. And I found two things there. Um, but this was one of them. I couldn't believe it. So in the corner of the, you know, how there's like blazers and it progresses to these like really short vest section, right? You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Where it has like formal vests and stuff like that. It's a really tiny section compared to how many blazers are in the entire store. At the end of the actual vest section was this thing. Would you think twice about this? Would you, would you wait, think to look wait, at this what, thing? Wait, what, what is that? I know that brand. Oh, Probably keep, don't. Keep turning it. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> you don't know this brand. I know this brand. <laughs> Okay, so now this is what it looks like in the front, all right? And if you're thinking, oh, no, that looks like sheep or wool or whatever. Wait, wait, wait. This. Give me the letter. First letter. Give me the first letter. S. Shot. Yeah. Nope. No, 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 no. Uh, it's actually, uh, to me, it's better because when you deal with shearling or, you know, sheepskin, wool, lambskin, this brand is pretty much up there. So. Oh, it's not show or shot, however you pronounce it? It's not that. It's not CC Filson either. 
Okay. Is it a Woolrich? Oh no. Woolrich is primarily. Yeah, Woolrich was last battle, I think. <laughs> yeah. So it starts with an S. Swan. Is it Swan? So just remember this, okay? Because the funny thing is, I found something else that was like shielding inside and all this kind of stuff, and um, I listed one of the keywords I used or put in my description was this brand, even though Sherpa, mine wasn't this Shirley. brand. Shirley. Nick Boxton no. says Shirley. No, no, it's just as, it's good. Trust me, it's called Sawyer of Napa. Remember this. Just trust me right here when you when you see this Sawyer of Wait, Napa. I think I've seen that in the sold listings right. before. I've never found that. Yes, oh, it's a Sawyer wow. from Napa, full blown wool, size large men's vest. I mean, killer. <laughs> now you know. Now, here's the thing if you're wondering, like, hmm, that kind of sounds like it's expensive. A lot of times, these blazers or these jackets will have an inner tag showing the store that had it in there. It doesn't mean that they made it, but it's the store that the brand contracted with to sell the product. So, here is the store name. If this doesn't bring you back to the 90s or the 80s, the man shop. That? The man yeah, shop. Yeah, by look what? But look at that. Look at the rest of it. I can't read that. Lord and Taylor. Lord and which Taylor. Was, which was a very high end store back in the day, known for furs. And yeah, this was a real deal store. It's up there with uh, not even Nordstrom, it's the other one, Neiman Marcus, and all those. So ah, anyways, this one right here. Getting some knowledge today. This is good. That's recent, a California sheep that they slaughtered to make I'm that. I'm telling thing. you, man, recent solds on those are around 140, 150, all the way wow. up. And that was an $11 fine this morning. Look at that. $11? Perfect condition. Perfect. Yes. Wow, wow, wow. Yes. So don't ever dismiss stuff like that. When you start seeing sheepskin inside or like a bomber jacket with sheepskin inside, you got to get excited because it could be like Eric said, a shot, S-C-H-O-T-T. -T. Could be a Sawyer from Napa. You might just have, you know, one of the things I'm going to put as a keyword for that is Marlboro Man. Trust me. Marlboro Man, when you do Sawyer from Napa, like all the top ones have Marlboro Man in there or Cowboy Marlboro. Seriously. So it's going to work. I guarantee you this thing will be sold within a month, hundred percent. Oh, are you putting a guarantee on the thrift belt? Yeah, man? no, I'm 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 a hundred percent positive because this is like I have to get rid of it now because the the season is still here. It's still cold. I have like literally one month to sell this thing, right, and work on the price and get everything right one month because after that it starts getting warmer in most of the U.S. and you know I know mean the story it'll goes. take up that much space in the closet, but I know you like don't don't like holding on to stuff for five years like I do. I'm putting that immediately in a box. Like Nike, Nike boxes says that stripper wear if there ever was one. <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, that's my that's my find for round four. Dang, that's a hard act to follow. It's okay. pretty good. The profit's really there. I mean, eleven bucks into 120, 130, That's pretty good. So I'm gonna follow that act, and and there's two reasons this is is on the bigger plus side than what it usually would be. One is because it's in fantastic condition. And two, because of recent news events over the last few months. So I went odd again, since I was in the, uh, in the, in the, I was in the mindset of I can ship long stuff now. <laughs> <laughs> There's my game winner, gentlemen. There it is. So this is a Playboy pool stick with the Playboy bunny all over oh, cool. it. This thing breaks down. It's in phenomenal condition. With the mindset. Yep. So like what, like 40 bucks to ship it, Casey? No, this thing is lightweight. I'll ship this. Does, it break, does it break in half? Because most Oh, it breaks down. Oh, bona fide burned again on the shipping. Okay, maybe 25. I'm just kidding. Okay. <laughs> so we've got the Playboy and the Bunny emblems there the th and there. The thing about nice. pool sticks, I don't know if uh, – um, this is your for is this your first pool stick you've ever – First pool stick I okay. have ever bought to resell, yes. The thing about pool sticks is they warp very easily if they're not stored correctly with like humidity and this and that. So be careful. Um, I guess the best way to do it would be to get a flat surface and roll it and you'll be able to see how straight it is. Usually okay. people do it on like pool tables because pool tables are straight. Yeah. But just like roll it and then look at it and then you'll see if it has any warps or anything in it. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to check it out. So but, Yeah, the um, comps are good. I'm on eBay right now. The comps are over 50 bucks. So Yes, the comps. I, I looked this up uh, two days ago. Make sure you roll it on your floor though when it's built. Okay. It's not, not each individual, you know, side. I mean, you could do each individual side. And yeah, it has to be built, though. It has yeah, to be yeah, built. So one it, which... actually just sold with an as-is tag from Spring Hill, Florida, which is an hour north of me, sold for $53 like a week or two ago. Pretty similar. So I'm expecting 50 or 60 out of this. I would love to get more, but I, I think that's fair. Uh, it's in great condition. It's nice weighted. Um, so the person that had this wanted 
uh, $25 originally. I tried to get them to 10 or 15, they wouldn't budge. So they were like 20 and I was like 17, they took 17. <laughs> so that's what we settled on with $17. I did pay up for this more than I normally pay, but even at 50, 55 bucks, I mean, you're talking about at 57, you're talking about what, $40 profit, less fees, less shipping, maybe 30 bucks to 35 in profit. Not huge, but it's great. I could try to sell it locally, avoid the shipping and all that. Maybe somebody would pay 30 or 40, I don't know, 50. But it's very cool. And with the fact that Hugh Hefner died uh, a couple months ago, all the Playboy stuff is selling really, really good. So if you can find Playboy, you could definitely sell it, especially when it's unique like this. So um, since I was in the mindset of my oversized thrifted items. <laughs> Casey, uh, we have 210 viewers in watching this show. What do they need to do, Casey? Um, if you like Playboy, you could definitely hit the like Ooh, button. If you, man. If, you, if you like the Playboy on this channel, Mr. Bonafide, you can, you can hit the like button too. <laughs> He's trying you to one up his fine do. somehow. That thumb down there, you turn it blue, the one facing up. We really appreciate it. And it helps everybody to know that you like the uh, content coming out on the videos. Somebody asked who the maker of this is. It's got a Playboy sticker on it. Obviously, some company made it. Um, maybe the, hey, maybe the bunnies made it, dude. The Steve, bunnies may have made this. You think yeah. the bunnies might have made that stick? It's possible. If they I did, know, I might keep it. I'm <laughs> trying to hit the – I tried to go into the poll, and it's saying enter your code into the box and click go to poll to find your poll. Uh, Uh-oh. <laughs> Is that the way of saying 404 error, like a nice way? <laughs> enter code into the box. What? All right, forget it. We're going to old school CP, method once again, code? man. What once is the again. code, CP? No code, man. Why is it asking for a code? Maybe it's Playboy. Well, we're not figuring this out on the show. Let's just go old school. Uh, Steve, ready for the old okay, school Playboy method? Playboy is not the code, just so you guys know. But anyways, what? Yeah, let's go old school method. Just type in Bonafide or type cool. in Rockstar. for whoever. Working for everyone oh. except for Steve. Hold on. Let me. Now it's working. Okay, now oh, it's working. Now yeah. it's working. All right. Let's take a look. Uh, you know, I might vote for myself, guys. You're allowed to vote for yourself. That's fine. <laughs> All right, here we go. I want to see the results. I, I voted sure. for Rockstar last time, so I voted for uh, BH this time <laughs> to make it even. I like that that Casey has something that's trending. It's different. We got a lot of we got we got Bonafide Hustler up sixty seven percent to thirty three with thirty one votes versus fifteen. Um. We should have a countdown. I'm going to hit the stopwatch. I'm going to give 15 more seconds right now, and then at the end of 15 Ooh, seconds. look at all the bona fides oh. rolling in. Wow. Well, you know, the pull stick's not going to keep you warm, bro. You know what I'm saying? You got five Man. seconds. Yeah, but if you were trying to hustle somebody at a billiards place with the thing, it's just not going to work. Yeah, but – Somebody asked if, if the bunnies made it, I'm keeping it. <laughs> can, um, I, can I share the results? Yeah, it's up to you. You're the judge. Bonafide. Bonafide one, uh, 38 votes to 18. Uh, so again, I'm no mathematician, but that comes to approximately <laughs> 56 votes out of 200. So there we go, guys. 75% of people aren't voting. What are you going to, you're going to just let the thrift battle go to the 25% majority, get in there and vote. But Bonafide took that round. All right. We're at round five and it looks like Casey is next. Oh, I got to lead this off. So obviously I know what the last item is. Okay. So I hope this isn't cheating. Nobody told me beforehand, Bonafide, you had your chance to call me out on it if it was. This is a two-in-one item only because I bought it as a I lot. thought about calling you out on that. I mean, you can certainly but select. I didn't we, can let, because... we can let the audience select which one they mm, want me to like, have. It's fine. Anyways, this was a two-for-one. The guy told me I needed to buy both because I was interested in both. And then I was like, no, I don't like your price. Anyways, long story short, we negotiated. I got both items. And they're kind of big, so I'm going to kind of hopefully make this – um, work, but I bought two telephones. One is old school and one is very reproduction new school. So the new reproduction new school, excuse all the cables everywhere here. Hang on. Anyways, this is, it's got the power cords. I didn't store it very well, but this is a dragon telephone. <laughs> that This, this is, is a dragon telephone. That's your, like your opening. No, no, listen, no, listen. So awesome. it's got the old fashioned, it's got the rotary dial things like the, the spinny things. And then this lights up and makes noises and does all this stuff when it's turned on. I made it do it for Bonafide earlier. And it could legitimately be a phone. It actually has a telephone wire cable in the back that you can plug it in. So the second item that is also a telephone, this is the one that I really wanted, but the guy kind of made me buy both. 
This is a vintage Tampa Bay Buccaneers sports themed telephone. Check it out. Corded. It's very heavy. This thing weighs 10 pounds, 15 pounds, but it's got the old school buttons on it. It hangs up with a telephone wire. It's an actual football helmet. Perfect for a man's room, a Buccaneers fan. Um, it's super vintage. This orange is the 1970s Tampa Bay Buccaneers. It's in pretty good shape for how old it is. Um, I tried to look up when it was originally produced. Looks like it was produced in the 80s. Um, and that's about how old it looks, maybe 25, 30 years old or so. Uh, stickers are still on it really good, but it is awesome. I love vintage sports stuff, especially things from my hometown. So I got both the phones. Um, he wanted a lot for this one, but because I took the other one, he came down. I ended up paying 20 for this one and five for the other one. I gave him 25 for both. What's the um, resale? Yeah. So the dragon yeah, one, like get to the point, get to the point. <laughs> What's the resale, bro? Yeah. The dragon one, probably only worth 20 bucks. Maybe it's brand new. He still had this sticker wherever he got it from and on it. The vintage helmet, not many have sold. You cannot find them on eBay. I found one sort of $89 it sold for. The only one I could find comped, and I have not looked in the three days since I bought it. I looked that night. I haven't looked today or yesterday. I was busy yesterday, and I don't think I looked on Monday night either. Um, I've been trying to comp it all week, and I can't find any. I'm going to try for 100 you know, my advice to you is don't ship that in the golf box, dude. Like I'm telling you, I have this obsession with these tall boxes with like crazy dimensions. Put that in a normal box, Casey. I'm serious. Oh, here we go. There's the light up dragon. Oh, jeez. Yeah. So that's what it does. I made it work. Uh, all right. All right. Well played. Well played. Um, my last find. Remember how in the beginning when it came down to our crap talking to each other, I said I was gonna claw i'm gonna i got something that's gonna claw your face off or something like that anyway yeah so this is what it is and there's a little bit of a story behind it but i went to a thrift store yesterday and uh, i found this thing and this happens to be a thrift store where i think four years ago three years ago i went with two green room members and um we found a stuffed lion on the floor that ended up selling for around four hundred dollars or something like that right it was like a ten dollar stuff line it sold for around 400 the two green room members split the profit it was pretty interesting uh, i was definitely jealous but uh anyways so because i didn't find it like uh, one of the green room members was like oh i think that's one of those things made by douglas right so no, no what <laughs> No. Well, it's not it's not a Douglas one, but check this out. So, I was at the same thrift store the other day and I got something that's going to claw your face off, Casey. This is a gigantic <laughs> tiger plush. So, I don't, I don't mess with plush unless it's really large plush. And they, they really large plush typically has in pretty I mean, sorry, they typically has amazing resale. So, this one's more than likely a Melissa and Doug one. Um, but this one consistently on eBay is around 1 to 120 like all day. This is a $10 find and it can definitely fit in a decent box cuz I can just fold the things up like this. I can put his tail up to his butt and uh you want to hear something funny though? Because I was trying to figure out um, at the thrift store like what brand it was, so I'm sitting there like by the door where everyone's coming in and out of like bringing stuff out and I'm like, "What kind of brand is this thing?" I'm going like this, like that the whole time. Anyway, so, uh, but yeah, anytime that you see really big plush like this, I have flipped plush deer before, plush, I've, I've flipped the plush lion not too long ago. Um, yeah, it's pretty easy stuff to do, but you got to get the big plush, not this like really stuff, and not the stuff, the plush that you can win at like a carnival or something like that, because that's filled with these little styrofoam little pellet things, and those are really annoying when the thing breaks open. But this stuff, Melissa and Doug, Douglas, right, those are really up there kind of plush animals. So I know you're thinking dimensions are gonna be atrocious, but honestly, this thing's gonna compact in a box that's probably the same kind of box that brings your bubble man, you know, your uh, bubble rolls to your house or something like that, so not I that know, big. I know we're hurrying the show, but Bonafide mentioned, a lot of people didn't hear it, but Douglas Toys created a line of Lion King plushes that are- Yeah, it was one of those. Okay, so that, I sold one of the original Simbas for $295. I found it at a Goodwill for three bucks. And what's very interesting, there's a collector's market for those Douglas toys. If you ever see the Douglas ones, any of them, grab them. But there is a guy in Washington State who has the entire collection. He goes on eBay and buys them and then destroys the ones that he buys. So his collection is worth more money. Oh, Somebody wow. else bought mine from me and thanked me for saving it because if the other guy had seen it, 
he would have bought it and destroyed it. He sent me video that the guy posts all over the internet on forum boards showing him exploding the Douglas Toys ones so that his collection becomes rare and goes up in price. I about fell out of my chair. But yeah, it's pretty awkward. Would actually. the price go up more than it costs to like buy them to destroy them? I don't know if the guy's out of his mind, but that's what I asked. Anyway, so somebody paid me two ninety five on eBay for the Douglas Simba. It was the full size, same size as that one. I got it at Goodwill, Lakeland, Florida for three bucks. I spotted it. As I walked in the door, I saw it all the way across the Goodwill store, like straight sprinting for it. I knew what it was. And I was like, ah, so look for those. Super good. Cool. I got to be out of here in like 10 minutes, Steve. The so voting poll for number five is up. Going. Voting poll is number. It's up. It's up. Let's go. Voting Let's go. poll. Use the voting poll, guys. Um, I don't know if you saw Casey people in the chat. Chad was saying that it, the the phone will be worth more than you think. Yeah, somebody told me 129 they saw something similar sell for. I thought 100 bucks to try. I mean, I could certainly try it a little higher and see what happens. It's rare and I'm okay if I sit on it, you know, 15 20 dollars in cost. I'm good with sitting on that. That's forward. the kind of thing that will go to a man cave where yep. someone retired has a bunch of money to spend to make it look pretty. Yeah, so I uh right, guys. I, I'll sit on it. Let me uh, let me come in here and share the results so we can move on to the bonus round. I know Chris only has 10 minutes. So uh, 43 votes to Casey's telephone versus Chris's Tiger, 21 votes. So Casey took out with a 67% uppercut. Oh, the so, phone. So uh, that's going to bring the, uh, the first main round uh, to an end. We have the bonus, of course, coming. And Rockstar is up one, two, three points to two. And we're now going to transition into the bonus round. So let me explain how this works real quick. Two questions, guys, okay? They're each worth three points each. Just like I said, Rockstar is up three points to two. These two final questions, three points each. First question we're going to get into right now is who explained their finds the best? Who dropped the most knowledge? Who do you feel gave you the most information so you can go out there and replicate it and find it and flip it? So um, we're going to vote right now if Eric wants to go in and create a – It's in there. Uh, it's in the there. chat. Okay, perfect. <laughs> Jenny is saying, where is Chris trying to run off to? <laughs> so this is all explanation. Who explained it the best? Oh, wow. There's my name. I should probably vote on that, huh? Wait. So I missed <laughs> the whole thing about the tiger because I was like creating polls. Oh, it was it was a better find. Don't worry about it. I'll, I'll fill you in later. It was better How than many, the, the helmet. <laughs> Just kidding, dude. Uh, the helmet was pretty sick. Seconds. The tiger. Wow, that Chris thing's gonna like knock in your whole box wall in your garage. That big tiger. Bro, <laughs> that tiger is gonna be gone pretty quick too. I'm trying to get these flips that are gone pretty quick. That's just what I want. It looks like Chris was the explainer. But Chris is. Chris has had like speaking classes and stuff. Huh? Haven't you done like speaking classes? Didn't you take public speaking? I have. Yeah. All right. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to share the results guys. Uh, Chris took 39 votes, 66% of the votes over Casey's 20 votes, 34%. So that's going to give Chris three points right there, which is going to bring the score right now to five points. Chris to rock stars, three points. Guess what guys? This final question if Rockstar gets it, he wins six to five. If Bonafide oh. wins eight to three. So this can go either direction, guys. Let me let me ask you the question right here. Let me put it out there. Who differentiated their products the best? Eric, do you want to explain what that means so people can figure out how to vote? Oh, we've always been saying don't I mean everyone says this like in the financial sense, don't put all your eggs in one basket. So for instance, if you just become a specialist in men's clothing and or men's button ups and then button ups get super saturated because someone like releases a guide on it or something. <laughs> and then, and then, you want a battle, bro? You want a freaking battle right now? You know I'm just trolling. But anyways, and then you need to know more about like sweaters and like men's suits until that guy comes out. And then you need to know about like shoes. <laughs> 101 <laughs> killer button. You need to know about telephones. You need to know about vests. And you need to know about tigers and like all these different things. Like, 101 know. killer tigers. I'm going to make that guy after this. <laughs> you need to know about all these different things. So you can always find something. Hey, amazing. is the poll in there? Everybody wants the poll. The so what's the, he, he, he like went on a rant. He didn't even explain what diversity is. Like, Eric. It's diversity. I was in the middle of making <laughs> the whole guide explain. market. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what does differentiating mean? Uh, hey, you put guide is, out, you destroy is, everything. Who is Chris K R I S? 
I just was messing with Chris. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, Rally Roots House is really cool. I was telling Eric the other day. Dude, my name still looks good, even if it's misspelled. I'm going to vote for it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The voting. You guys, this is for the oh, win. It's close. Who, it's close. Oh, my gosh. This is so close. Best. It's so close. No, no. Vote for me, guys. Go vote. <laughs> Holy Don't crap. Vote. This is close. You guys. Had more Chris, diversity. It should be Chris a 30 second, second timer. Okay. 30 second 30 timer. Starting now. I've got it. Right here, everybody $1 vote. Everybody, find. click that link and oh, vote. Every single person. This is so close. Wow, Holy crap! I've insane. never seen a battle. This is for everything. This is for the who's gonna live. This who's is. Gonna isn't die? this the finals of the losers bracket? Yes. yes. Or do I have to? I lost the rally route, so I have to battle the winner of this. Vote, 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 vote. I, I thought I was done battling it, but I finally lost. Seven, Somebody said rockified. Five. I don't think I have another four, battle in me. Three. This I'm gonna see close. who wins. Two. One, the winner is Casey, fifty-two percent oh! to forty-eight percent. Wow, what a that was the craziest thing I've ever seen. That was awesome. We gotta remember this poll though. Woo. That was awesome. You'll come back in like ten minutes, and it'll be your great. Chris will be up. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna refresh it one more time. No, Casey's still one. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, Casey, holy crap! Can I shake your hand? Good battle, bro. Good job. Bonafide rolling. Listen, that stuff is crazy. That Wrangler shirt is sexy. I didn't see that, that was, shirt. That's on, that was a loss. great thrift battle. Uh, you know, final wow. thoughts, Eric. What do you think about that thrift battle? It was it was rushed. <laughs> 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 All right, there's his final thought. I'm glad he didn't go on a rant on uh, guides and stuff. So, uh, Steve, your final thoughts. Uh, you know, I was definitely inspired to create a tiger guide. That's the one thing I got from this show. Um, really happy about the pole being fixed. And uh, yeah, two big things I learned during this show. Uh, Riley Richard in the feed saying absolutely crazy. I, I feel like um, I really wanted to pull out the Sean White at the end and get a gold medal. But it looks like Casey, um, you know, had a better uh, lineup. And that was good. You know, the, the thing about Thrift Battle, guys, it's not about who wins or loses. It's about having fun, learning the thrift game mm -hmm. in a different way. And, uh, you know, really seeing the community for what it is and um, learning finds in a completely different ballpark and sense, you know. So on a Wednesday evening, we hope to, you know, show you guys more of these thrift battles. We're going to be having thrift battles number two, uh, season two pretty soon. And I'll be in charge That's of getting awesome. the entire application process ready to where some of the people in the public can join in, battle some of your favorite YouTubers, and even battle some of the people behind the scenes in the green room. So we're going to get that whole thing going on. It's going to be amazing. I want to take a second. I know I speak on the behalf of the, all the admins at the Green Room University, but you know, thanks for joining on to this uh, thrift battle thing. It was a concept that um, I kind of thought about a month and a half ago, two months ago, and it turned out to be something we wanted to try out, and it was a lot of fun. So if you enjoy this concept, and maybe you have a want to be on the next Thrift Battle Season 2, then just put a comment down below, or uh, maybe comment who you want to see on Thrift Battle Season number 2. But I really enjoyed hanging out with you guys, and uh, Defeat feels odd, but it's fun to hang out with these guys. It does. It feels, I know, I know um, that it's all done and fun. And uh, at the end of the day, like still love Casey. I still love Eric. I still love Steve. This is just a fun community to be a part of. I'm glad I decided to film videos, you know, five years ago and get into it. So anyways, thanks Casey. Like, honestly, thank you so much. No, thank you. And if it wasn't for Bonafide four years ago when I found him, then this all wouldn't happen too. So I have him to thank for that. The show was awesome, and if I have to battle Rally Roots, I'm going to hire Bonafide as my uh, helper to coach. to coach on against Rally Roots. So it's on. That's right. And so uh, Rally Roots and um, someone in the UK, Zaheer, have to battle each other. So we're going to try to get that thing scheduled up. But uh, we're almost done with season one. It's about three more weeks. We'll be done. But that pretty much wraps up the Thrift Battle uh, number eight. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you hit the like button. Steve, take it away. Yeah, smash that like button, guys. Uh, if you guys haven't already gotten our free book, 100 Amazing Items to Resell, I think that's the first link below. If you want to get prepared for the battle, maybe you'll there get There it is. There it go, is. Go find some of those items. But go subscribe to Rockstar Flipper, guys. Uh, he's an awesome guy. I met him in real life, and I tell you, he's just as cool uh, in real life as the videos as well. Ditto. Right back at Mr. Raken. Check out the co thank you. Check out the college picker, of course, for all his awesome videos and editing and everything, man. Cool stuff. If you want to learn how to solve problems, go over to the college picker's <laughs> channel. And uh Bonafide Hustle, man. Thanks for throwing the show on. Appreciate it, man. All right, guys. We'll see you on the next thrift battle number nine coming soon. Stay tuned. Take it easy, guys. Bye.